What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. And um, yeah, this is the last time you're gonna see me looking like this rough, man. I'm due for a haircut, and um, and it, I'm due for a haircut. I'm re- a haircut very bad. Um, but uh, I get my haircuts on Sundays. This is a, we're recording this on a Saturday, so uh, hopefully I'll be in tune on uh, on Weapon Will looking better. I got a busy day ahead of me uh, tomorrow. I'll, I'll share those. Uh, People Adam, used to look at me looking like looking rough. So, I'm telling you, dude. Uh, it, I tell, nothing new. I told you you gotta get the you got the you get the the Kelsey cut. I don't like calling it that. The Kelsey cut. It's a white man with a fade, but that's all it is. White uh, man with a fade. Why yeah. can't it just be a fade? Why gotta be a white man with a fade? Uh, I'm just saying, no, because the thing is, in the media, if you hear people call it a Kelsey cut, it's not a Kelsey cut. It's just a white man with a fade. But it's a fade, but like a fade on a white man is a Kelsey cut. Because if you see a black guy with a Kelsey cut, it's not a, a Kelsey cut. It's a fade. Uh, so, <laughs> it sounds horrible. Why can't horrible, it just be a fade, though? It, 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 it is. It's, it's a fade. It, it is a fade. But I'm just telling you why they call it a Kelsey cut. Because if they put a fade on a white man, it's considered a Kelsey cut. To them, not to me. To me, it, it, it's a fade. But the reason why they're calling it that is because I'm, I'm telling you, do that, lighten up the beard, right? I don't lighten think you. I don't. I, I don't think you should have. I think you got to give the, especially in July. Like you can't be walking around with a hibernation beard in July. You gotta, you gotta tone it down. Get the cut. You'll be all right, man. You know, you'll be all right. But tomorrow, uh, a couple things. Obviously, we got. I got to get my hair cut. Uh, I'm going to see the big three Ice Cube's basketball league. They're they're they're, they're going to be in the area, so I'm taking the the fam to see that. Uh, that's going to be interesting. And um, I, I think after that, then I should be back in time for Weapon Will podcast. I believe we're going to be uh, on this week. I'm not sure if there's a whole lot to talk about, but let's talk about some of the games we've been playing. And dude, 2024 for me. Is looking like I'm, I'm probably going to finish the year with at, at most maybe 12 games beat, which is equivalent to like one game a month because um, I, I do not like I'm not I haven't found a game I fell in love with uh, to stick with me right now to this day. So far, Hellblade 2 is my game of the year. Um, I say that with no hesitation. It's very early. I'm pretty sure there's going to be better games that come out. Uh, but Hellblade 2 right now is my game of the year uh, easily until I play something better. But what are you currently playing? Um, hopefully I'll play Flintlock sometime today. We'll see. Send me a PlayStation code instead of an Xbox code. So obviously I had to, mm-hmm. you know, set them straight. I ain't playing that. I need an Xbox code. Yep. Um, I just beat uh, Shimigami Tensei. Finished that game. I beat Mario RPG. I'm playing Resident Evil 4 Remake live on stream mm-hmm. um beat the fun uh the the destiny stuff so i think i'm finally done with destiny i might jump on destiny eventually and do the raid but besides that like i'm pretty done with that game okay. uh it's it's been a relatively i still want to go back and play resident uh play final fantasy 7 rebirth i still can't believe i haven't beat that game like that's kind of crazy and it's nothing like a, a contesting of the game itself i enjoyed my time with rebirth but when you stream games now you feel like you can't play the game if you started streaming it on stream you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, yeah. i've so, never uh, I, I haven't beat a single game in the final fantasy franchise not a single i one. think the the final fantasy games is a good place for you to start nah. seven remake nah no, nah, I think um, I'll think I'll probably I'll probably do Final Fantasy uh, 16 when it comes to Xbox, since I don't consider that a, a, a real Final Fantasy game. It seems like a Western action game with Japanese uh, S characters. Um, um, other than that, um, but yeah, there's a, the crazy thing is there's a lot of major franchises that I played. Or that I've never beaten. Like, I know Final Fantasy is, is one of them. Never beat a Dragon Quest game. Never beaten a Mega Man game. Never beaten a um, never beaten a Zelda game. Never beaten a. Whew, like, there's yeah, this is just a lot of significant games 
that people cry <clears throat> over that I've never beaten or even uh, given the opportunity uh, to beat. Because I, I don't care. Uh, I'm... There's a gameplay style. There's only a few gameplay styles that I like that stick with me. Um, I've never beaten an Ori game. Um, I beat Ori, both of them. Um, I've never beaten uh, what else games that you know Microsoft puts out that people like. I've never beaten State of Decay. None of them. I don't um, think you can really beat State of Decay like two. But I don't think I've done anything significant in State of Decay. Like I don't even know how. Like there's these objectives that I have to do. And once I don't figure out how to do the objectives, I completely, like, just give up on the game. And there's, like, because I didn't understand how to, like, collect things, put them together. There was, like, some tower. It, like, I don't I don't like that aspects of games. Like, like your basic objectives, especially early in the game, because I think I'm early in the game. Like, all my hours in State of Decay is spent doing random shit, shooting random zombies and, and, and losing characters because I don't know how to feed them or house them or properly loot things. It's, um... It's, it's something that I never took. I've never, I haven't, real, I haven't beaten a Sea of Thieves. Like, I know you can't beat Sea of Thieves, but they have these expansions and story quests that I, I feel that you can complete. And I haven't finished any of them. Um, but yeah, man, uh, I haven't beaten. I don't think I've beaten an Elder Scrolls game. Uh, I think the furthest I've gotten in any of them was maybe Oblivion. I, I might. I, the thing is, I don't know because my it w- my achievements would say I've beaten Oblivion. I didn't beat Oblivion. I don't think I've have. I didn't I be- beat. I beat Oblivion, Morrowind, Skyrim. Um, I didn't beat the like the older older ones. I think yeah. Daggerfall and there's two Arena and Daggerfall. I never I think beat those the, the first two. I never beaten a Fallout game. Um, I beat Fallout Three, <laughs> New Vegas, but I didn't beat Fallout One and Two because those were uh, uh, that I beat them when they went like 3D. Yeah, the first Resident Evil game that I finished was, uh, I think RE Five. <laughs> With you, it, it probably was RE Four because I did play Resident Evil Four GameCube when it was a day. Got a day one. I, I know I played a long a lot of Resident Evil 4. I don't just don't recall if I finished it. Uh, I like some of the stuff that's happening now. I recall portions of it um, in my original playthrough on GameCube. Um, I don't think I've beaten the Grand Theft Auto game. Maybe Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is probably the only one I've beaten. But I haven't beaten like so three Vice City, uh, obviously four and five. Nope. Um, I, 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 I played them all. Just never finished them all. Um, I don't think I beat Vice City without cheats. I did beat it, but I don't think I didn't beat it without cheats. I did beat uh, uh, San Andreas and GTA Five without cheats. But I, you know, one of the games that I didn't play was GTA Four. I didn't like it. Like I didn't like the driving in that game. It felt like very yeah, very um, weird. But as far as games I'm playing now, um, I've been trying to I've been trying to play um, like for some reason my I, I played through Perfect Dark Zero, but I feel ashamed adding it to my list because for some reason Xbox will not unlock the achievements for me, um, and and I'm very ticked off by that. Um, I didn't play the Perfect Dark games like none of them. I played the I played them both. I only beaten through Perfect Dark Zero, and this is the second time I I beat Perfect Dark Zero. The Back in the day, doing a 360, but I think what happened was back in the day, they had specific achievements, me- meaning you had to play the whole game through co-op and get the achievements, or you had to play the whole entire game through single uh, player and get the achievements. When back in the day, I did, I think I started it on single and then I finished it on co-op or vice versa, and I didn't get any of the achievements associated with the story. And then this time when I played it th- this year, I did the whole entire thing on single player and I still didn't get the achievement. So I was like, you know what? Uh, fuck that. Um, I, so I played through Perfect Dark Zero. I played uh, through... I've been playing The Descendants, which is the new game. Uh, I think the, the Warframe I uninstalled developers. that on stream. Really? It, it really? Just, I, I, guess, I guess maybe it's because I played these... Like, I play Destiny. Mm-hmm. And to me, you have to at least do what Destiny does equally before mm-hmm. i even consider playing you like 
And these companies, they got my uh, interesting ideals, but I've never came across one of these companies that even touched the combat and the gameplay feel of 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 Destiny. Have like you played Warframe? Close. Have you played Warframe? Yes, I didn't like Warframe. Either. Yeah, the, I think these come from the Warframe, guys that did Warframe felt better. Warframe did feel better than this game, but now, it, it's just like. The combat is so unsatisfying to me. Like, yeah, I mean, I I, 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 I feel indifferent. It That's the most disrespectful thing you can do to a developer is unst- uninstall a game live. Oh, I did. Uninstall that suck a lot. Uh, I, I I mess with it. Uh, so far, um, I played. Uh, uh over the last couple of days has been the game I've been playing. It looks like they've updated the game significantly a couple of times. Uh, right now, um, this is game is running on UE five. For a UE five game, it's not the prettiest game, um, but it, I like the shooting. I like the mechanics. I like the uh, uh, power ups. It's a lot of content there. It's very microtransaction heavy because it is a free game. It's a quality free game, but the, the co- cosmetics is just thing. And you can't like, I, I don't know how much I have to play, but the content you get in a base game is good. That, that, that Destiny cycle is there. That Games as a Service cycle is there. It is a. I think it's good. I think it's fun, and I like the story behind it. Um, this game, I've been. It has like a fidelity mode. It has a performance mode. It has ray tracing options. I tried playing with ray tracing. I'm not seeing what it really does. Um, and they also have frame gen- frame generation, which I've just enabled yesterday while playing in a balance mode, so I can sort of get the best of both. But I'm not really feeling that um, that the visual noise that you're uh, getting. Um, but overall, man, it's a good game. I know uh, the crazy thing is uh, about this game, which is funny. And I think this is going to be the trend for all Unreal Engine 5 games until the PS5 Pro come out. You know how there was that article that came out, right, about Digital Foundry had a question. I don't know why everybody makes a bunch of freaking articles about it, but they had a question on their DF Direct. And somebody was asking, well, why PlayStation games keep out, you know, doing Xbox and is Xbox the most powerful? Da, 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 da. It's been years. Da, da, da. And um, so people made these articles about it, but, and like clockwork, this new game that the first descendants comes out multi-platform and the Xbox series X and Xbox series S is beating it in performance in all modes. Like, like literally like Xbox series S and X is holding 60 FPS and PlayStation is, is like dipping down to like 40, 30 FPS in this performance mode. And these are UE five games. So it's kind of crazy that it happens. And, and the thing is it, it, the articles are also giving a false impression out there are in some games, right, and some big games that came out in consistent big games because Digital Foundry and all these other guys do not cover every game that release. And this is this is where it, things get tricky because not every game that gets released gets covered or get these comparisons for them to definitively say, you know, PlayStation's out doing Xbox. It's just the games that they've covered, and they're usually, you know, big games. I'll give places to that where it happened, but... Um, Lately, Xbox has been having uh, the edge in the game, especially if the games are Unreal Engine based, uh, UE five based, and whatnot. Um, but you know that was a, a a topic that came up. Um, and my my thing is about these uh, comparisons. I really don't care no more. Uh, nothing. Only way, only get things I do on PlayStation is when PlayStation releases a good game that is only available on PlayStation. I I have to play it there. That's the thing. General games and games in general, I will play on. Xbox because that's just uh, what I do. But for Xbox to dethrone this, these stupid comparisons and stuff like that, is they got to uh, release games. And um, we had a discussion last night because Xbox hasn't solved their their game release problem, right? You said you said you, you mentioned something. You said Xbox is having a bad year. Yeah, and it's not like. In terms of platform wise, I think they've done a good job in terms of platform in general, but in terms of first party, like we we're on, we're past the halfway mark and we yeah. we've only played Hellblade. Yeah. And we you know, and I'm not saying that like avowed Indiana Jones aren't coming out this year, but it's just like when? Like we we don't even have release dates on a game that's supposed to come out in the next like four months. Like how? 
Like, and I get maybe because they're, the, they're not the only company that's going towards this. A lot more yeah. companies are going towards hoping that really uh, keeping that release date close to the chest. But I feel like part of marketing is being out there, you know, saying with your chest out that my game's coming out this day. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm just like, how are you going to effectively market a game? When you do, you, do you, are they just gonna announce it? It's coming out that day on Twitter. Usually, you rely on like a big event to give that, so more the most eyes are on it. Mm -hmm. But I just, I just don't know. Like, we, we, it's like I said, we're, we're the seventh month in. Maybe they announce it at uh, at Gamescom. I mean, that's a possibility. Announce what the release dates. Uh huh. Um, I think, um, yeah, I'm not a fan of this. Like the thing is they own the biggest game that's coming out this year. Right. My thing is if they know the date for call of duty, you can kind of, everything else can just fall in this place. Um, they have a ton of games, right. Coming out. And the problem is, is yeah, the whole, the second half of the year problem is like, you know, Hellblade two came out in May. Like, I feel like they should have had something. You know, in the first quarter, I feel like uh, I feel like Hellblade should have came out in in March, um, and I felt like you let the second quarter, uh, the summer months, spring summer, dedicate to your partners. That like the big games, like I it, like if Flintlock came out potentially, like well, Flint, Flintlock's coming to, uh, coming out at a proper time. Um, uh, maybe use that period to like drop games in Game Pass from Activision Blizzard. I know we're gonna talk about that. I feel like they that that's how you kind of properly like fill the void. Um, with Xbox, it's, it's weird because they'll start the year off right, giving us a you know developer developer direct, showing us games that's coming. Boom, 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 boom. Great, but there's nothing tangible that we could use or play immediately. I think the I think we started off the year with Pal World, which is eh, yeah, it's an exclusive, but it's not uh, first party, and it's one of those you know game trials. Those uh, yeah, I think it was rumored that's coming to PlayStation soon too. Yeah, eventually uh -huh. it has to come to PlayStation at some point. Yeah, um, <laughs> you had that Hellblade again. It came and went. Still, I, personally, I said as I said earlier in the podcast, it's my personal game of the year until I play something better. Um, I th they didn't give it uh, the proper hype and release window. The release window was fine because there was nothing else to compete. But the thing is, they, they didn't. I don't think they did the game justice. You know, when you look back at the Xbox Series X reveal and they revealed it with Hellblade, it's like, damn, bro. Like it's almost like I wish they didn't reveal it with Hellblade. I wish they revealed it with. They could have revealed it with um at that point back in twenty nineteen when did they they had, had they acquired it was nothing Starfield <laughs> no at that point you could have no you could have still revealed it with uh, revealed it with a Halo trailer that's I I like but that, I don't think it would have hit the it would probably would have hit the same yeah I'm trying to think who back then was Hellblade really the biggest IP they had back then yeah. that they could have not that it was the biggest I think it was the most surprising. The most surprising, yeah. The most surprising at that time, because a lot of people didn't even know if Hellblade Two existed. So you know, you come out there. Mm -hmm. I, I do think it was the right call, but the biggest thing is Halo Infinite didn't come out at launch. Yeah, if, um, if they could have got Halo Infinite out at launch, mm -hmm. uh, in better quality, because obviously, even when the game came out, it was lacking a little bit on the the PvP content, mm -hmm. then I think they would have been in a better situation. Uh, but they did; they, they weren't able, and Halo got had to get delayed. It, it was so bad that Halo, Halo, was on the box, mm -hmm. and it didn't it didn't come out. It was literally on the box for the Series X and didn't come out that year. So I, think um, I still have my box. I mean, matter of fact, let me go double check. Hold on. Yeah, so I mean that, that that's my biggest thing, you know. They, there's a lot of scenarios that goes into this, you know, when it comes to what they're. I don't think this year's like bad for Xbox, like in terms of like overall, in terms of platform. I do think it, it's it's doing pretty well, but as far as like, if you just look at the first party aspect, I, I think it's a, 
felt like pretty pretty bad in that sense and and that that could be all this time next month we could know the release dates to everything yeah so i don't think that's like necessarily going to keep up the rest of the year mm-hmm. but i would say at this exact moment and in, in july the 6th at 11:40 a.m. it is it, as an xbox owner and an xbox primary user mm-hmm. I am a little bit disappointed with 2024 uh, in terms of a first party. Now, in terms of, like, all platform, not as much. Because here's the thing. The reason they are able to get away with stuff like that to a lot of the Xbox ecosystem is because Game Pass always keeps you busy. There's always games in Game Pass you can play. Every month they drop at least one game that most people would be interested in. And that's able to get them by. And then you got, you know, games in general that come out, like the Resident Evils, the First Descendants. Uh, you know, you actually got stuff to do, like, in terms of third party, but mm-hmm. in terms of just first party, mm-hmm. it is a little frustrating. And, you know, when we were talking about the Halo Infinite, uh, I don't think they'll ever even have that issue anymore because now they have Call of Duty. Yeah. So because Call of Duty comes out every year, if they don't have nothing, they the bare minimum that they're able that they are able to do. So we'll just bundle it with Call of Duty. Yeah. That shit. I would do that. <laughs> Bro, like I, I see uh, if uh, never mind, I'm not even gonna do that. You know what's crazy though? Thinking about Halo Infinite, right? And then thinking about this box when I open the box, it, it does make me I honestly makes me emotional. Because uh, Halo Infinite the thing is Perception is a killer. Halo Infinite is not a bad game at all. It's not, but it, 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 there's a lot of little things that I feel like could have improved on that. And when it comes to the, the single player, even though the single player is fun to play, when you compare its open world to something like a Far Cry game, it does fail in a lot of aspects. I want to do the. I, I, I do want to play through the campaign again in co-op. I, I want to get that done. I, I, yeah, and that's another thing they didn't have at launch co-op. At but launch. you know what? It forced me to play through a Halo campaign. This was the first Halo campaign I played Dolo, and I and I played that beat it on heroic, and it was fun, yo. That was like some of those boss battles was actually fun. I actually enjoyed that shit. Like I really thoroughly enjoyed Halo Infinite, and the the, the problem is perception, journalists, and people. It, it, I don't know, man. But do you think them owning Call of Duty and it comes out every year gives them the ability to put release Halo like a traditional Halo again, like a regular yes. Halo game? Like yes, you don't no Halo. longer need it to because you're not you're not going to compete with it. You don't you know Halo longer need. could go away and, and be in yeah. development for like four or five years, like actual development, yeah. and um, then come back. Uh, I do think they're not done with Halo. No, no, no. I don't want them to be done with yeah. Halo. I think Halo yeah, and I, Gears I, and everything can coexist, but I think they can be, can they be regular games? And do they have to be forced to this games as a service BS? I it's think not they that can, they have to, it, I, st- I still think they're going to be games as a service because that's just the way that those type of games that make money. Mm-hmm. And, and I think as a as a, a developer, because I saw one of the old Blizzard developers. His name is um, what is his name? His name is a uh, pirate something. He he's a YouTuber now, and mm-hmm. he said because he worked overtime for two years in the short that he made. He worked on StarCraft, like for two years overtime. Played like worked on that game religiously for two years, and he said. In Warcraft, they have a a horse skin. Just a horse skin made more money than, than they, their game did. Like, ju- just the horse skin made more money than what StarCraft generated. So, you know, I, I don't think... Here's the thing, like... It's like he said on there, like... They're not... They're not going to make a game... That they can't monetize to that degree. Now, do I agree with it? No. I think there's easier ways that they could monetize Halo being mm-hmm. a games as a service without yeah. going the extra mile and saying it's a games as a service. But mm-hmm. for being their perspective in the industry, I do think Halo can be a games as a service. But the problem is you have to put money into it like a games as a service. Yeah. 
Everyone wants to make the Destiny money, but no one wants to put the money into Destiny that Bungie's put in the past 10 years to make that money. You know, they they, yeah. they think it's just like, oh, you know, I just get the night crew to, to work on some... No, it takes the whole damn studio to make a games as a service. And I have been told firsthand that Bungie, from people that worked at 343, that 343 was not capable and they weren't set up right to to work on that game as a games as a service. Yeah, man. Um, The whole games as a service aspect. The thing is, is that, again, I think it... I think it 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 can work, but like the thing is, is that keeping up with the expectations of a game of services. Because uh, I think my, my the problem with Halo Infinite was that if it was just sold as a regular game or presented as a regular game, it wouldn't have that trouble. Wouldn't have anything to upkeep. You know what I mean? I and uh, but I at think, this point, though, can you compete as like that as a multiplayer game? Mm-hmm. Can you compete with the Fortnites, with the Apex Legends? Like that that's what people don't realize when they say, well, Halo doesn't need to be a games as a service. Yeah, Halo doesn't need to be as a games as a service, but it's not just about a money standpoint. It's about a competition standpoint. Like, how are you gonna get the people off the the uh the Fortnites, the Apex Legends, the Call of Duties? Mm-hmm. Like and then they I feel like every year there's a newer you know, games as a service that comes into play that gets some type of attention, maybe not like huge amounts, but it's enough to get some people off for a little bit. Like, how do you do that? And and that's not even to mentioning like the random pow worlds that drops that get that grab the world for three or four months. Like, and that happens a couple times a year too. Like random, random games come out and get people's attention. Like it's not just about, you know, can Halo, be it not as a game service, can you compete in a games as a service model and keep people off? And normally the way you keep people off of the uh, the competition is you're generating more and more content. And the yeah. only way to justify that kind of content is identifying the studio as a games as a service studio and give them the proper funding to keep up with that. Yeah. Um, I, I I think it, and that's why I can't stand uh, uh, the success of Fortnite and all those other games that yeah, you know, came Fortnite. out because it dictated how our are the games that we I I th- I will say this tacked on multiplayer I, has I will been agree better. With you. Fortnite single handedly changed the industry for good and bad. Yeah, I don't even like Fortnite. I think tacked on it's, multiplayer. It's, it's fun. Attack on multiplayer, I think, has always been a form of multiplayer versus like dedicated multiplayers. Like that's what the thing is. The Gears of War wasn't even all, all about multiplayer. It's just that it was an option. It was there, and it took off because it was fun. You know, the uh, the I mean, Halo obviously had multiplayer elements, but these things were like fun. Like the games that the the mesmerizing multiplayer experience we've had with a lot of these games were all based off games that had tacked on multiplayer and wasn't sold to you because of multiplayer it was just an option that was there and it just turned out to be uh to be great and we're not getting those things anymore because the thing is now that multiplayer is the focus and this game is starting it has to generate revenue like the concepts change the the way that is the, the way we jump in it, it it all changes and and it's hard to enjoy so i think uh, the way that the multiplayer uh, is done now has driven me away from multiplayer because I don't play multiplayer as much as I uh, uh, previously yeah, but, but did. But that just that might be just the the way you play games have changed throughout the years. Like, would you, would you say that you play games and multiplayer as much as you did back in the prime 360 days when Halo Three and all that was out? No. I don't. I don't play game uh, multiplayer games to that degree anymore. Mm-hmm. So, like, would yourself now, like the mentality you have now, thrown back into those days, play Halo Three like you're playing now? I don't think you would. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, may maybe. Um, uh, maybe. Uh, there's a. Uh, 
I no, I can't say that I won't play. I wouldn't play multiplayer the way I play multiplayer. Uh, I wouldn't play multiplayer now the way I did back then. If the game's fun enough, it will. Cause I like when Halo Infinite came out. Like I've, you know, I was dropping out. Obviously, I'm older. I'm not spinning. I'm not staying up till four a.m. to, you know, to, to play through the game and stuff like that. But I put significant amount of hours into it. When you know when Gears uh, uh, came out, you know, I went back to that. Clearly, obviously, when Madden's uh, come out in 2K, somehow when I do play them, I put uh, uh, I spend most of my time in those games in just PvP mode, just playing against other uh, players of the um, of those uh, games. So I'm not I'm not a uh, I don't think that I play games less. It's just that I don't find the multiplayer games like as fun or as inviting heck i was about ready to burn a lot of uh hours into a a, a crackdown that had they had they had support bleeding edge i thought it was a fun game it's just that they gave up on it like i don't and and i agree with you but i would say even with those games Mm -hmm. i didn't play them nearly as much as i played even just one halo 3 yeah like besides destiny i can't name a game i played multiplayer wise more than that game yeah like i played xbox uh, apex legends a lot but i played a lot of halo 3 like an absurd amount of halo 3 yeah and maybe maybe i od'd myself on multiplayer back then maybe the 360 i played so much multiplayer i never truly recovered from how much i played and, and, and like was a because maybe that that's possible and then you gotta look at like Titanfall, mm, yeah, that's probably yep. an example of a game yep. that I, I felt was was on the caliber uh, to the other games. But then what happened? Titanfall wasn't a games as a service, didn't make the money that they needed to, wasn't didn't make the kind of money that they could have justified continuously supporting us. So what did they mm-hmm. do? They dropped that shit, like, and, and and went for with an Apex Legends. Yeah. No, that that, that 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 yeah, that's true. I I, I prefer Titanfall over the pay. I don't like Apex Legends. Um, I don't like I again a lot Legend. of uh, these new gen games. Um, but you know, I did mess with Titanfall a whole lot. I I messed with Titanfall a whole lot. I couldn't mess with Titanfall too because I thought their the multiplayer regressed, but they did have a great campaign. Uh. To make up for it, but I only played through the campaign like once. I didn't, even though I thought the campaign was great, I didn't only played through it once. That multiplayer, it just wasn't grabbing me. Titanfall one's multiplayer, ooh, like, and that, did that even have microtransactions? Probably not. It was just like it was just so it would be we paid full price for it. And it was multiplayer only, but it was dope, man. Dope experience. Dope experience. Um. What else we have here? Um, okay. So we're still waiting for Microsoft to, uh, you know, drop content in the Game Pass from Activision Blizzard. The deal has been uh, in October it would be a year. So, right, I think we're, we're three months from that. So they closed in this deal nine months ago. Looks like the FTC is slowly but surely backing out of the case as their lawyers are stepping down from the case. They're not really they they've already made household changes, got rid of studios, laid off people. Like there's nothing really for them to undo, right? Um, so that's why I get so strange when they say, "Oh, they're still fighting the FTC." I'm like, bro, that didn't stop them from closing down studios and and spinning them off and and laying people off. That did not yeah, stop any of that. People, people need to stop with this. They're worried about this worried yeah. about that the ultimate thing you can do to to get bad publicity is to shut down studios and they shut down a few of them mm-hmm. uh and not only did they shut down some of them they they let companies like toys for bob go independent mm-hmm. like you mean to tell me that they had the ability to let a company go independent but they don't have the ability yeah. to like drop abk games on game pass yeah yeah like that don't make any sense to me. And I mean, uh, they, they, they've, they've officially now it's Call of Duty coming to Game Pass. They officially announced it. They, uh, uh, they officially made games, you know, streamable. They've uh, 
what else have they done? They've they've gone multi plat with game like you know what I mean. So they've killed every narrative that the FTC tried to fight against them. And so it's like okay, so even if they were doing it for the FTC, they, uh, they've commit they've pretty much fulfilled their FTC promises already. And, but they haven't fulfilled their consumer promises. They didn't put anything in Game Pass yet. And my thing is, what's the wait? Because my thing is, they had an opportunity to do it during the dry months, which has been a complete drought this whole entire like time. Hellblade being the only release. Like you had the if you wanted to drip feed, you could have literally used January to now to drip feed games, you know, two games a month from any of those studios. Like why? Why why wait? And what's the rumor now? We're go- it's going to happen in August, but for what? Why 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 August? Why not before? Why not one game at a time? Like you could have done one game a month and we would have been, you know, that would have kept people engaged. I don't understand. This is the concept of Microsoft that I don't understand. Like, for example, I know that Modern Warfare 2 or 1, which one of them is already a play anywhere title. And, and enabled like title they could have been dropped that could have been the first one they did like are we gonna literally wait until black ops uh six goes in the game pass before we start putting old games in there you would i think you would put older games in there first to you know get our get pretty much to get us used to seeing it or preparing us having us go back into the older games and whatnot and and, and do that like even like the the thing i don't like because you got Crash, right? Crash Bandicoot, which is currently in like PS Plus and all this other stuff, and you're it's still not in Game Pass. It, it's it's just kind of stupid. That's why when Crash finally comes, I, I'm it's not going to have an impact on me because like, dude, you had this in PS Plus for a hot minute. Like they don't, I don't understand how they move. I don't like how they move with some of the things. Is why that's what yeah, it makes don't. it impossible to be a fan of Xbox because they don't they're not logical with their things. It's like whatever makes sense to them, I think don't I make will, sense to I us. will agree with you when it comes to like they put if I remember correctly, they put Bethesda games on PlayStation now even after mm-hmm. they bought them. Yeah. And it's like I understand there's money aspects to it. But how is that good for your business model when you're allowing your first party to be on other Especially, you know, they, they scream so much about how Game Pass is important. If it's so important, why don't you make your service the only place where you can play those games in? Yeah. You can still buy them. Yeah. But why are you letting those games yeah. go to other, uh, you know, service-based models? It, like, it makes no sense. It's kind of contradictory in a way to me. Yeah, they're... Um... Yeah, it's like their goal... It's supposed to, it's like, if your goal isn't to sell Xbox games consoles, but to increase the Game Pass subscriptions or increase monthly after users, you would, you would, they, I don't understand. They don't understand the concept of exclusivity and in, in that, yes, it, it is needed to some degree to increase something. You need, if you're not going to have, um, if you're not going to have exclusive games to sell your Xbox games consoles, then you have to have games exclusive to your subscription service so people can choose Xbox over any other platform to play your games on so they know that there's the uh, value in getting it like uh cheaper but they don't understand they don't understand that like concept and it's sad being that they've been in the industry this long getting a ass beat by to by companies that only does exclusives that primarily thrive off exclusive just like, like hey you need some form of exclusivity to, to, to compete sure you can still release multi-plats and get the and sell your games but you still need games to um, uh, to for your subscription service. You still need some sort of form of exclusivity. It's like, hey, you know, this game's available on play. Like Call of Duty is available on, on on PlayStation. I could buy it on PlayStation, or if I have an Xbox or a PC, I could just literally play this shit in Game Pass and save myself seventy dollars. But it's like, um, they need people with common sense to work there. They they they. I, I don't even think it's it's like a common sense factor. I think. They have too many business models conflicting with each other. Like, you shouldn't have to be able to promote the cloud disputing of, Mm -hmm. you know, of, of your streaming service when it comes to playing Xbox on the cloud 
but also at the same time demote people from playing and buying an Xbox. Like there should be no marketing with the words you don't need a console in anywhere. Mm -hmm. They they should replace it with stuff like play your console on the go or something. Yeah. Like, but they don't do that. They 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 make it seem like you don't need it. Yeah. And, and so then why are you complaining internally about the the console metrics when you're letting other you know business models in your company fuck with the console sales? Yeah. Yeah. It's their messaging and marketing of their play anywhere initiative is is it proper for you to have a brand for you to sell like hey i have an xbox to sell i got games to sell i have a subscription to sell they're they they don't have to say no console you really don't have to say i I would just say now playable on this now playable on that why do you have to say uh, no console required now playable on a go like you said now like you know what i mean you can literally you have all these ways of doing this without you know killing one it, one portion of your your business and which is the and i understand of- probably from like a like a marketing standpoint those terms probably uh you know uh vibrated with with uh the audience better mm-hmm. but me if someone came to me was like here's our marketing this month for cloud and you see something like starfield and it's like okay why are we telling people not to buy a console? I understand that the console is not the center of their attention anymore. I disagree. Mm-hmm. I feel like the way you 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 boost your ecosystem is to sell more consoles, and then you use the the accessibility of cloud to get into areas that you're you've never really been successful at, like Japan, China. Like you 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 attack it from multiple standpoints, multiple side fronts, but to me, Microsoft's own divisions fight each other on whether or not they're going to actually sell or not. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's true. So um, my thing is, is that, all right, Activision Blizzard, uh, we're finally, right now there's only one game from that, you no know, acquisition that went into the subscription. That's Diablo 4, which I believe was always going to go. Uh, in my opinion, um, and the, the rumor is that it's supposed to be coming out. Um, so August is supposed to be the start. Do you have any details on what what games they're gonna start with, and, or how many, or and and why is it this way? Um, not necessarily. I have been told that they have some high expectations this month. In terms of Game Pass in general, so I would say that has something to do with their plans for, uh, you know, the ABK games. Mm-hmm. Uh, when people were reporting on it, they used images of Crash Bandicoot. Uh, so that would be very interesting to see Crash Bandicoot going to Game Pass. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's, my opinion, it's a little too late. Yeah. I think they, they lost some of the the energy that was into it uh, at the beginning. Now, it's not necessarily mean that it won't be effective. It's just me personally, the stage to do this was at E3 or whatever you want to call E3 these days. Absolutely. You know, and the fact that Ryan had Phil Spencer after that show. Yep. And he didn't ask him this simple question is mind blowing to me. Yeah. You know, every, if you look at everyone's predictions, Everyone said a huge Game Pass dump of, of ABK games. None of that happened. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand why Ryan didn't feel the need to ask Phil Spencer that question unless Microsoft told him no. And that that's not Microsoft's fault because that's their job, their PR. Their job mm-hmm. is to protect the company's interests. Yeah. Uh, it's IGN's fault for allowing those terms. Yeah, I, I yeah I don't understand why nobody had. I think everybody saw Phil Spencer. I don't know if anybody asked behind the scenes, but um, there was plenty of opportunity 
uh, for people to ask, whether it be IGN when they have the big interview, that would have been the best way to do it, or the biggest stage to do it. Because if, if IGN can't get these answers, who else is going to get these answers? Yeah. I mean, I've asked, like, when I was at E3 in 2017, and I went to go see uh, Phil Spencer at the Xbox, uh, during, at the Galen Center, um, the, I played a, a few of the games that were there. And I asked him when, when the whole game passed, and this is when they announced uh, OG Xbox games being backwards compatible. I was like, hey, I was like, I see this as an opportunity for you guys to really relaunch these games in the subscription. Like, get them, like, in this. You made them backwards compatib- com- uh, compatible. Now put them in the service. Just put them in Game Pass. You know what I mean? That 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 would be a nice way. And he, he shook his head to it um, and whatnot. But... If I was there at this one, and obviously I've been uh, like, "Hey, when is these ABK games coming?" I think would have been if I would have saw him be honest, he's like, "Hey, when are you guys gonna do this AB- these ABK games?" Like, what's 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 told that long? Like, uh, you shouldn't be afraid to ask a question like that. If he says can't answer, can't answer. At least I ask though. You know what I mean? It's on my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? and that, that's the part that just disappoints me the most. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot said like off the record, but the problem is yeah. there's a lot I know off the record, but you can't make it record. So like, like that's useless the information is useless because you can't say it yeah absolutely absolutely all right so um we know xbox is going to be at gamescom in august um are we expecting uh like a, a presentation or is it just going to be at like they're like 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 packs or something like that like are you expecting announcements yes that's the only time it makes sense to give these release dates is, okay is uh is there Especially since they're not going to be at the Tokyo Game Show. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. And they're not going to be at the Tokyo Game Show. They confirmed. But PlayStation is. What yeah, is pl- Everyone's like, going to be there by Xbox. Yeah, they got rid of their only Tokyo studio. But didn't, didn't they open last year's Tokyo Game Show with Tango? I believe or two so. years ago they did that? I, I, I don't remember exactly. Uh, but they have announce like big games coming into game pass in yeah. that event yeah maybe uh we uh, maybe who knows who knows maybe square enix and, and and capcom and bandai will announce games at tokyo game show that are actually coming to xbox um that would be nice uh appreciate it if they do so if they can if they can do so um if not i mean i i don't I don't. I know Tokyo Game Show starts at like a, a particular time. I know it's on the other side of the globe, so um, and it's usually when I'm sleeping, right? So um, I'm not gonna stay up to watch anything for. It. I don't think I really care about the region of game. The games coming out of that region to a, a high degree. Um, but- I've stayed up every year for the past few years covering that event, and this is the first year I don't have to because Xbox for some good. reason Xbox decided, and, and, and part of me thinks. Maybe it has something to do with with uh, Tango getting Tango. shut down. <laughs> you think somebody do at know. Tango is uh, waiting for them to smoke them? Like, <laughs> no, it's no, it's just I know that people don't realize like the Japanese, the Japanese influencers and the Japanese companies like they really stick up for each other. And uh, the dude that ran Tango that left. Mm-hmm. I highly doubt he was happy with them shutting the studio down. And he's a big name over there. Like, if that dude decided, I ain't fucking with the Xbox, and made it like a personal vendetta because they ruined that studio to him, which I don't know if that's his opinion or not. Mm-hmm. Like, how hard would it be for him to slander Xbox behind scenes Maybe we're looking at this wrong. We're like, oh, Xbox isn't there. Maybe T- Tokyo Game Show didn't want them there. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying that's the case, but I am saying that in, in probably one of the years that they've been pushing real hard with being able to get uh, Square Enix games more, uh, you know, they, they're getting the, the Metaphor game coming out this year is marketed mm-hmm. by them. Yeah. And the, the year that they should be there the most, they're not there at all anymore. Like no presence whatsoever. Yeah. I think there might be some lingerance of 
what they did with Tango Studio because if you look over there on the Japanese portion of these companies, there's no layoffs like there is in the States. You know, when's the last time you saw Nintendo lay off 500 to 1,000 people? You don't. Now, question. Last... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. When's the last time you saw any Capcom? Capcom is on record hiring last year on top of giving higher pay raises. Like, Japanese companies don't roll that way. And I'm sure from a from an optic standpoint, a perception standpoint, imagine all these people leaving Tango and going to other companies. Well, yeah, man, Microsoft shut us down. Like, like they don't play those games. Like, no, you're right. Um, would it be beneficial if Microsoft, right, or Xbox Game Studios got rid of all? the names of the self-identity names of like their studios and this all became Xbox Game Studios. Do you think, because they say if, if you're just known as Xbox Game Studios, you wouldn't know if studios got shut down or not. <laughs> think about it, right? It would just be, <laughs> think about it. See, would that be beneficial? Because that's what Nintendo does. Nintendo don't got no studios. Everything is under whatever Nintendo is. Nintendo's got studios. We just don't care about them. <laughs> Nintendo's got studios. What studio got, makes uh, Mario? That make, uh, hold on. Who made Mario? Uh, Mario Wonder. Hmm? Uh, developer. Are you right? People who make Mario for sure. It's just called Nintendo Entertainment Planning and Development. <laughs> uh, but I know, like the Metro people have their own studio. Yeah, but uh, all right. What but about it, Zelda I, and uh, Donkey Kong? What about Mario Kart? Who makes them? Uh, Donkey Kong does have a developer. Uh, it used to be rare back in the day, but <laughs> the development is developed by Nintendo Entertainment <laughs> Planning and Development. And you know what's funny? Th this is one of the few studios where uh, this is Nintendo's one of the few people where I would actually say they still have rock stars in the industry because, like, when you hear about like these games, you hear about. The, the leads more than you hear about the studios themselves. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Miyazaki, I, I think that's his name. I always mess up his name. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I didn't realize that because I don't really pay <laughs> attention to Nintendo Studios. Yeah. But I do know they got a couple stu studios that actually Yeah, that they, out, they outsource some for like, uh, like I know Pokemon, there's like a, a particular team that does that. And I think uh, I think a particular team does Zelda or they outsource Zelda or something like that. But uh like, but yeah, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, they I, they work a lot with yeah, Bandai and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, no, this is my thing is, is that, hey, if we didn't, if they didn't self identify these studios, right? They were all Xbox Game Studios. A lot of stuff we it wouldn't be a big deal to us. But one thing, like, we might be saying that as like influencers, and would that be better for their perception? But should we give that kind of info? Or like, should we give that kind of criticism? Because uh, obviously we can say what we want, but I do think that, you know, us as influence, we really shouldn't be <laughs> asking Nintendo, I mean, Xbox to make it easier to like. No, I'm not saying not... that's what they should do. No, no, I'm, I'm saying, not saying like... you are. <laughs> I'm just saying from your perspective, you're right. It would be better for them. But what are we really saying here? We're saying that they could do whatever the fuck they want. Because no one's gonna know who the fuck I laid <laughs> off. Like, because all it's, all you're gonna see is all Microsoft laid people off from uh, Xbox Game Studios. <laughs> like, yeah, but but it would make it look worse too because most of the time in certain situations, you're okay. You know, there's been 
500 people throughout at everyone getting uh, laid off from this studio, this studio, this studio. And then it's going to go from, okay, we didn't really lose a whole lot individually in every studio to they lost 500 people. And we don't know where they came from. So it could be a whole studio just got laid off and we wouldn't know. Like, Wow. I understand your, your concept. And I think if, if, if the industry did better, it would make sense. But I, I do like being able to ho- uh, hold companies accountable, like easier to hold companies accountable. So I don't want them doing that because then it's going to be hard to hold them accountable for anything. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I just thought it might be. Start uh, calling the team one through 15. <laughs> team two laid people off. Like, who's team two? Well, the person who you, uh, this person used to work for Rare. So that's the Rare team, I think. Like, then you find out he went to Coalition. Two years before that, then upgrade, uh, update his LinkedIn. So, like, th- I think there would be a lot of misinformation too. <laughs> like, yeah, that's crazy. Um, the um, what else we got? Uh, what else we got? Um, so. Tokyo Game Show is happening. Xbox won't be there, but they will be at Gamescom, which is taking place in August. Things we're waiting for, we're still waiting on release dates for Indiana Jones. Avowed was November 12th. They leaked it, and then they took it down. Do you think it's because it's going to get delayed from that date, or is it going to come out earlier? I would be surprised if both games get delayed. Delayed to when, though? Because uh, they've been talking a lot year. about Avowed. They, they continuously I, I, talk I guess about to Avowed. Me, these games most likely are coming out, but I've always had the mentality, no release date, it's not coming out this year. Until you give me a release date, I automatically just going to assume that game's getting delayed in the next year. Now, I understand it's probably best for the industry to not tell us release dates, but as consumers and as like influencers, that's bullshit. Like, Because it's hard for me to plan my life around it. You mean, you're going to tell me a month before the damn game comes out? Yeah, like, how are you going to effectively market that? Yeah, you can't like, market. By the time it. you yeah. get the marketing up, it's already out. Yeah, but then again, we saw Hellblade two. They marketed that bitch for like a month, and then that's all. So, and we knew that release date for a minute at that point. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this does coexist with how they're marketing these days. I don't know because we've yeah. we've said that they need to, you know, market more traditionally with the with their game. Yeah, we had Hellblade marketing since January. I think we got and it was decent. Really, it was really decent stable. marketing. I will say Hellblade 2 once they actually launched, I do think they didn't market it early enough, but once it actually started marketing, it was good. I think Starfield's marketing was was good. I think I respected um, it once they did it. Yeah. Yeah, they I I just I think the biggest issue is why are we marketing a game a couple weeks before it comes out? No, true. I, I, I think um, so. The games that we're missing release dates for that were subject to this year is Avowed, Indiana Jones, Towerborn, um, Era History Untold. Um, that's four games. Um, I think we got a Flight Sim is November. It's a weird date, and it's it's considered Flight Sim twenty twenty four, but it's coming out at the end of the year. Um, you got uh. Stalker 2, which is September 6th. Um, oh, uh, we were missing date for Starfield Chattered Dreams. Um, so that's five games that are due this year, big games uh, that have no release date, but that's due this year. The only games that have release dates are uh, Flight Sim, uh, Age of Mythology, Retold, History Retold. Didn't that get a release date? Yeah, that's the only one that has a release date. It's oh, okay. like early September. And I'm actually gonna play that. That's about I mean, it. I like. I try I like these the games, but I just don't know how. To, like they gotta. I don't know, man. I, I, there's just some games I just can't play. That's why it's not on like my radar. I think I'll skip that and 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 I'll mess with like Space Marines. I think for the end of August, I'm gonna say the, 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 this definitively. For the rest of the year, uh, the best games are gonna be coming from Ubisoft and Xbox. I think they're going to be releasing the best games for the rest of the year. It's like I said at the beginning of the podcast, I don't think that this is going to be an issue. Xbox is going to have all year. But as of right now, like, it is a little frustrating that we can't plan anything. Like, I don't know when these games come out. 
and it's hard for me to like justify like you know taking time aside and when i do find out these games come out and what time mm-hmm. it's not going to be like a we got to plan last minute around these games yeah okay. yeah so but the games i'm i think i'm looking forward to um so yeah they have they, they got the release dates for call of duty asian mythology and flight sim and everything else they don't which you would think if you own call if you were waiting for call of duty's release date and you own call of duty you can easily plan this um uh, but I am looking forward to a vow every time I see it, it looks better. Reason why I don't think a vow is going to get delayed out of this year because they've already been in the communicate. They're in there already in the communication portion of their marketing. They they keep talking about it. it's always on Twitter. Uh, they keep throwing out uh, you know trailers and whatnot. The only thing they don't have they they they're on countless interviews. The only thing they don't have right now is a release date, which is it's kind of stupid. Uh, but um. I, I I'm I'm on the mind that uh, I think I really believe Avowed should have so one of these Avowed or Indiana Jones should have came out in like uh or August. September is, is almost like so those this, those Age of Mythologies and Arrow, they both can launch in September. We wouldn't care because these aren't market driver games. These aren't games that these games that you know they'll come out, you'll play them in the in the subscription if you want to play them. But just the market share isn't really looking out uh, for these games. So I think it's okay if Microsoft dropped a few games in September. But if Starfield is September, then you let Starfield have September. But what's up? With, when is Dragon Age coming out? Because I know that's going to be a big one. Um, hold up. Because you got you got yeah, Outlaw, yeah, you got Star Wars yeah, Outlaws, yeah. which is at the end of August. Oh. Which people are currently uh, unhappy with, like the Star Wars. Twenty twenty four. They didn't give release didn't give, date for that. All right. Either. So the thing is, is that if you want to give, I think Starfield should. Uh, I think Starfield and Stalker could release the same day. Stalker's going to be too hard for people. Like you know what I mean? The 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 PC, let the PC crowd mess with that. Let us console dudes mess with the Starfield expansion. They can release it because it, it only makes sense to release Starfield. That's another thing. We don't even know when Starfield expansion the, the coming expansion out. come right. out the same day. It should make it a year, right? Like I'm giving you a two year. Don't let it, it can't come out eight and uh, thirteen months after nine. Let it be the year. If you either drop it at the end end of August, my thing is if they were going to drop it at the end of August, they should have you know they, they got to be on the marketing train now. I they got a oh man they ah uh, they got to give a release date for that. They they, that they boy, got bro. too much shit that's not having release date. It's yeah, like way too many realistically games. the next time they I mean I guess they could shadow drop release that some of the release dates like maybe the the Starfield expansion they could just shadow drop that release yeah, date. Yeah, remember we got the Starfield release date didn't happen at an event. It did not happen at an event at all. Cuz remember when we did uh what the hell happened? But e- e- even if it didn't happen at an event how is it good for the game that you release when it's coming out, not on a big stage? Like maybe, you know, maybe there's previews that's going on too, and they're waiting for the previews, like an avowed preview. Maybe people yeah, are going to be playing avowed, avowed here this, soon. At this point, the, the avowed preview can't happen. Now, what preview are you talking about? Are you talking about like the preview, like the real, real preview, like uh, like the IGN first type preview? Because at Something that like point, that. Like, you already so, typically have the release date already for that when you when you get to that well, point. And I feel you, and that's traditionally how stuff goes. This is clearly not traditional. This isn't just an Xbox issue. It seems like the the whole damn industry, like we just said, we don't even know Dragon Age's release date. Like, no one wants to give release dates to anything. And, you know, th- this seems like the new norm. Mm. I don't think this, I don't see this changing. Mm-hmm. I, I see more companies actually adapting to this, like... Yeah, you know, we know some release dates in some games, but this is the one of the first years where if you go look at like one of those release games in 2024, every month has like four games because nothing has release dates. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I I feel bad, right? Because you got all right. I think. I don't think people are going too crazy over Star Wars Outlaws because people aren't happy with Star Wars right now because the show um, and all this other stuff going on. Um, so it's not that it's like I think you're OK if you le- release around that time. I'm going to play Star Wars. I, I think Ubisoft has been done a magnificent job. I think the most recent Ubisoft game that I, I now I will say 
I, I'm not happy with. I wasn't happy with the last Assassin's Creed. Though. I wasn't happy with Mirage. I can't beat it. I can't play it. I don't like it. Um, and I'm struggling with Avatar. I wanted to like it because it's a beautiful game, but it's not very like coherent. Like, and, and I'm thinking if it was just like Far Cry in uh, Avatar Universe, I thought it would be approachable because I just beat two Far Cry. I could beat Far Cry Five and Far Cry Six back to back. And thought those were incredible games. I think Avatar looks beautiful. It's just not a fun game to play because it's not coherent enough for me to, uh, uh, to play through. And um, so I, that's what I was, uh, but, And the thing is, so Outlaws, I have faith in. I think th- that game's going to be great. I really do think it's going to be good as a video yeah, I think, game. Yeah, I think that game's going to surprise people. Um, Assassin's Creed, the new one, I it, it's going back to the t- Assassin's Creed game I like. I know it's going to be taken. Now, I'm, I'm wondering if this Tokyo thing, this, this Japanese thing is going to mess with me because I haven't been able to, like, I couldn't get through Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I don't do a lot of the, the, a lot of Neos. I mean, would you consider Wolong is like, I got through that, enjoyed that uh, uh, thoroughly. I like, I loved Assassin's Creed Origins, love Odyssey, and I, 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 and I thought Valhalla was pretty good. Um, it looks like the newest S3 is closer to that, but obviously in the you know the Japan setting and whatnot, and the, the different play styles that they're going to play. So I think Assassin's Creed is going to be a big game. This is probably going to be a big seller this year because there are no megatons this year outside of Call of Duty. There's no Grand Theft Auto. There's no Switch Two. Um, there's no big game Sony's dropping, um, and they're supposed to be dropping a PS5 Pro. So when you look at it, you know, my Xbox owns the biggest game this year which is Call of Duty, and then Ubisoft, which their games tend to do well, but they're never mega blockbuster, like, oh, my God, and this is the first time in a long time they have an IP that's going to be like, hey, we have a lot of people anticipating an Assassin's Creed uh, Creed game uh, this time around, and so they're they're now considered uh, a big player. So my thing is, is Assassin's Creed, that game, a, a big of a game where Microsoft should avoid uh, releasing Avowed around it? Like can they coexist? And then, uh, no. and then Indiana Jones being rumored to be in December is like okay, nothing's going, no major games gonna be available in December. But if Indiana Jones has the potential to be a game of the year type game, you really want to miss this year's game of the year nomination by releasing in December. Like, I don't know, man. I mean, logistically, <laughs> should it matter if it's a it can meet the the video game one more thing? No, but. We've seen just being at the video game awards in any way, shape, or form is marketing by itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, as of right now, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. And a Valve's rumor to come out in November, and that that's damn near at the edge, too. Yeah, well, so it we, depends. It depends because, you know, they move that requirement when it's a PlayStation game. You know, what I mean? remember how uh, freaking um, God, of War. God of War, it was three days after Forza Horizon, like, Five, so Forza Horizon uh, came out, I think, the fifth of the month uh, of the year that it came out, and it missed a cut somehow. It got a war, came out, I think, was it, didn't it come out, like, what, the 22nd? Or the 18th? What did it, no, it came out late in November, and it was still uh, eligible to, uh, to get the nomination. So, um, yeah, like, but I think if Avowed sticks with the, the November 12th date, right? Let me just pull up the calendar right here. Uh the November twelfth. So, if Assassin's Creed's November fifteenth, which is a Friday, so they were gonna go for a traditional Tuesday date. Um, my thing is, if I'm them, if I'm them, I mean, that's another thing I get annoyed with when I tell people that Jeff should do a, uh, the Video Game Awards in January, yeah. and it should be all of last year. And people say, "Oh, it's because of marketing reasons." Okay. I don't Marketing give a fuck what, what the reasoning is. Because, the, because being someone that negotiates the sponsorships, people are willing to pay way more money around the holiday season than they are after the holiday season. Okay. True. But to yeah. e- even know that I understand that, and the business side, it makes perfect sense. But as a gaming industry, that makes no sense. It's like because these games will literally come out within a week, and then and then they're not consistent either. If they if they said every year you got till December first, and if you don't make that date, 
it's on you because you had till December first. But I feel like they they take that and they they move it backwards or forward whenever it's convenient for them, mm-hmm. and it's not consistent year to year. No, it's not. Um, I think. Um, all right. So if Assassin's Creed is coming out on a Friday, I think Avowed. You know what? Push that bad boy up. Come out. Come out on a Friday too. Come out November first, or come out November like. They, I think Avowed should come out either November first or November. Uh, Games typically come out Tuesday and Wednesday though, don't they? Yeah, but Friday has been for blockbusters. It's been Fridays. They've been moving it to like Fridays. Um, um, I would like. If we're going that way, I would like an October like twenty fourth, thirty first kind of thing. Yeah, but uh, my thing is, is that the changes that they're implementing in the game is like uh, the event. The game ha- right has a gold gold right. The, if if the game goes gold in like September or something like that, then they can they I I, I I'm with you. They should, but the thing is, Call of Duty is October twenty fifth. So the thing is, is that if you're gonna release in October, you gotta be early October. Or you gotta be, or you might as well just fall into like the, the next month. So they're gonna be already launching in a, a weird time. You're either gonna launch, if you're gonna launch in October, you gotta launch before Call of Duty. And if you're going, yeah, or you have to, or you have to launch that. in between. And my thing is, it's like okay, let's say you launch after Call of Duty, but let's say you also want to give Assassin's Creed room to breathe. Then you October 25th is the Friday. Literally, it's also a Friday. October 25th is a Friday. Again, they release blockbusters on Friday. Um, so you release that if that on a Friday, then you can probably, all right, get through Friday, right, that week. Make make yourself available the same week Flight Sim come out because nobody, you know, fuck, Flight Sim is an update. It's not even a proper game release. It's an update. It's an, it's an expansion update that's going to update everybody's Microsoft's uh, Flight Sim to 2024. That happens on 2024. That's not something you need to move or pivot around. You can literally release Avowed either that same day to on the 5th, or if you want to go into the weekend of FOMO, like because Friday is a you know, big day, you go November 8th, and then you're two weeks after Call of Duty in a full week before Assassin's Creed. And chances are, if real hardcore gamers are going to, if you're going to play day one, you will be done with Avowed probably before, right before Assassin's Creed come out. Because Avowed, even though it's an, it's an RPG, but it's like it's like the outer world, so it's going to be something that you can probably spend forty hours in and get the seventy percent through the game. Like obviously, when I say seventy percent, you're going to finish the game, but maybe you didn't do a hundred percent completion, but you do enough to get a a, a, a ch- nice chunk out of it. Because I'm trying to think how long it took me to beat Outer Worlds. I don't think it took me a long time to beat the game. Yeah, I mean, here's my thing when it comes down to it. We're saying this, saying that. I do think that, you know, especially like influencers and podcasters, like, mm-hmm. why are we doing so much? I, you know, it's like I said, when I bring up something, they say, you know, just like the layoffs, well, addict, that's not how the industry is. And it's just like, why do we care about the perspective of businesses? Mm-hmm. Like, when it comes to release dates, that's not how the industry is. We can sympathize and understand why they're doing it, but why do we care? Mm-hmm. Like, why do we care their perspective? We are consumers, because that's what we are at the end of the day, mm. wanting to know when we're supposed to buy or play these games. Yeah, It doesn't matter what their perspective is. Why don't we know more of these release dates than we do? True. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm, I'm going to say this right now, and I'm also going to tweet this out. If I'm Xbox, remainder of the year, this is what the, the my remainder of the year looks like. Starfield, uh, Shatter Space comes out. I don't, I don't care. Same day as Stalker Two, uh, Friday, September six, and it meets the year of the game. It is what it is. That that you got to do it. Um, it shouldn't come out no later. You can come out earlier if you want it, but the thing is, if you come out earlier, you're running out of time to market it. So September six, safe date, safe bet. And that's too much from today, which they should. <laughs> that's what they should do. Um, our history and told like again, you can drop that anywhere. I don't really care about that. Um, Call of Duty is already set for the twenty fifth, Friday the twenty fifth. Recently got that release date. Yep. 
avowed. I'm going to, I'm doing, I'm doing avowed November. I'm doing avowed November um, 8th. And I'm doing Indiana Jones on November 26th, Tuesday, right, right before Thanksgiving. Uh, allow it to go on sale on that Friday, uh, the 29th. You know what I mean? Do whatever you got to do for that. Um, and and that's how you pretty much finish the year. I do not. I would not release it in. I would not release it in um, December. It's, it's, if you're gonna release now, if you're gonna miss the game of game awards, it's like whatever. But I think I hate December releases. Do it at the end of uh, November. Um, I don't think any games releasing out that last. That would be the last week of November. Or if you want to, this is gonna be also tough. You either do the, that 26th, Tuesday the 26th, or you do Friday the 22nd. I think if you do the 22nd, you have a chance to meet the Game of the Game Awards. If you do fr- if you do Friday, November 22nd, you have a chance to meet the Game Awards uh, um, with that date. Oh, I hear you. I think at this point, man, just give me release dates. Yeah, definitely. Like, well, we gonna when is Gamescom? Next year, month? Uh, is it's it month, the end game, or the beginning? I think it's it's usually like the middle of the month. Games, it's probably gonna be when I'm in Connecticut. Gamescom, twenty. So I mean, are they gonna? Well, tell me what day it is before. Absolutely. All right. So Gamescom is going to be. I don't know. It's at the end. It's the twenty first to the twenty fifth. So you mean to tell me that a game's come out in September <laughs> that gets a month of uh, advertising? If, ga- if the yeah. games come out in October. That gets like a month and a half of marketing. Uh, in November, we're we're at the end of the year, so like I get it. Marketing's they've been traditionally marketing this way anyway, but it's just like I don't think it's effective see, enough. Yeah, I don't think it is either because maybe that's another side effect of Game Pass, where they're like, look. A lot of people are going to play this on our subscription service, so why should we market this to a degree? Uh, and that that just puts out another thing where I say Game Pass has, you know, been the blessing to Xbox and a curse at the same time. Yeah. Oh, man. I think it just... Yeah, maybe this will work out better than we think. Maybe... Because uh, I do understand from a standpoint on some people where they're like, they got a lot of games that doesn't have release dates in general. Like, um, what's that game uh, we were just talking about? Uh, Dragon Age. A- and I understand that. But at the same time, it's like, you mean to tell me that Xbox doesn't know when Dragon Age is coming out? Maybe Bioware and EA don't know. But you mean to tell me that Xbox will have an ideal when these games are coming out? I highly doubt that. I highly doubt they don't have an idea of when these games are coming out. Yeah, yeah, they should. They they, they communicate. Uh, they, they they have a good relationship with uh, EA and Ubisoft, and they always mention when they're doing release dates. They they try to you know work with uh, their partners to see what's what's what. But also the Game Pass effect too is that does the Game Pass? The thing about Game Pass, it actually makes release dates irrelevant, right? Because you're not lining up to. You know to buy the game there's no you know what i mean if you're playing game pass there's no christmas gift to like there's no gift effect this is that's why i don't understand why they even still bother targeting the second half of the year like if your game is coming out in game pass why does it have to come out in the fall you know what i mean you in, in that case you should you should be releasing where people up. are more available people are more available technically in the summer if and if, if game pass is like is are we gonna have this issue next year probably are we gonna get fable and Gears at the yeah, the, I believe the direct so. with no release dates. Yep, absolutely. I think they'll get like I'll, I I do believe they'll get Windows right because you. My thing is you're not going to show up to the direct and just say 2020, uh, 2025. That would be stupid because you're in January. You know if you if you know like come on, bro. You can you can give like you can say fall twenty twenty five for like you know what I mean or uh, Q four twenty twenty five. You can say that 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 will be fine. Uh, Cause that we we get in, like some sort of like window, right? Um, the other thing is that what you uh, I think I think what's going to happen is like, and if you want, I know it's probably early to to say this, but 
there there's usually what four or five games right that they show at the developer direct can you can you name which games you think we'll see at the developer direct fable mhm um, gears of war you think gears gears of war is coming out in i don't think gears of war is coming out in 2025 yeah i I, th- I think i think that game's a lot closer than people think okay um Compulsions game. Okay. Okay. And probably some random game from Square Enix or something. All right. I think uh the what games are gonna be at the direct are gonna be um the Doom game, new Doom, because I think that's coming out between Yeah, I forgot about that. I think that coming out like April, May, so it ha- it has to be there. I think that's almost a guarantee. South of Midnight uh will be there I for sure. Cause I think that comes out earlier. And I don't think I think that's going to be like a late summer game. Um, the I so I, we got Doom South of Midnight. Um, Clockwork Revolution. I think. No, nah, I, I, th- I think we're. I think that game's a little further out. You really? Why? I feel like that game was the most the well, look, most complete when we revealed it. It looked like a regular. Yeah, but this it, is also from the industry that showed us fucking anthem remember how crazy anthem looked when it first came out but it, but it came like, out it still came out but, the but next it, year though i don't i don't want you to take like when you see these vertical slices mm-hmm. look is that a vertical slice we don't know uh all right so but, we, we saw anthem in what 2017 or 20 yeah 2017 and it came out in 2018 and it, 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 it we and I agree with you on that, but we've also seen games where they said when I showed you that I had nothing on the game already built. Right. I'm not saying that the game that is happened with be Hellblade. That happened with Hellblade too, because there there was no game when they showed that at all. It, 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 and I feel you. I just like I'm not saying it's not possible the game comes out next year. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying don't take everything you see in a trailer and think it looks complete, meaning it is complete. Uh, because you know they they could have a concept and. And they made that trailer tailored to what they want the game to experience. I mean, uh, my people do that I, shit all the time. They do, but I think the, the uh, when you usually when you do concept, the concept looked like super crazy. The Cot Revolution didn't look super crazy. It looked like attainable, easily attainable. That's that's what makes it me might come out next year. Right? So but, I, I got Clockwork Revolution, and I do think I think Clockwork's twenty twenty six. Okay, because I think Gears is twenty twenty six to meet the twenty year anniversary of Gears one. That's why, like now, I now I'd be surprised if is it great, but I think my the, the four games they show uh, for next year is uh, Doom, South of Midnight, Clockwork Revolution, and Fable. Um, That'd be a good direct. That'd be a, now, a but the, the thing is though, I get nervous about right because what's the big game next year is it do you, is it fable or is it call of duty again right because my thing is is that oh who, you're talking about the the thing they in the direct uh the, the yeah because my thing is do you go back because remember starfield wasn't at 2023's developer i don't direct. want them to ever do call of duty again like give call of duty its own event like don't don't take a stage and show us a game we know is already coming and we know what's going to generally look like. So, uh, do you think Fable gets that start? Because if, if, if Fable is going to be the, the Starfield shit, right? Like how Starfield got its own, then it won't be I, at the you, developer. You're probably direct. right. It won't be at the director. Then, that, that's, then that's what I'm like, all right, then what game? Then what other? Because they, they usually go in there, we're like, usually they give us, give us, they guarantee us four games and they surprise us with a fifth. That's what typically happens. They typically surprise us with a fifth. And if Fable's Maybe not a part of it, Revolution. Because remember, Indiana Jones the first time we see a game. Well, what, what happens if it's a uh, if it's that uh, coalition? <laughs> see, but I think, oh man, uh, out of all those games, the only games that could get that spot is probably either Fable. I would see like a Gears would definitely get that spot if yeah. Gears was able to come out next year. Yeah. I don't know if Exiles Clockwork would get that spot. I feel like it would be earlier than the year. 
I don't know if it would get that. Because let's be real here, not mm-hmm. every game's created equal. Yeah. The biggest game they have to market's going to get that spot. Yeah. The only yeah. reason Call of Duty got that spot this year is because I think it was a variety of reasons. One, they didn't have like anything huge, huge that's bigger than Call of Duty in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. And two, I think the biggest reason is because they wanted to show we own, that's all shit now. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. Do but, they repeat that? I hope not, because it's like I said, I prefer them to give that to the Blades, to the Coalition games, to the Fables, to the Halos. Like, like, give Call of Duty its own direct, but don't give it that direct. Because that direct, and I think you can agree with me, Smooth, is a very important direct. Yeah. Um. So, a scenario like that would be... Um, yeah, so it makes sense for Call of Duty this year. It's fine. It's respected, right? And this is probably going to be one of the better Call of Duties in a long time, right? Fable, I feel like, is a game. Because it looked like they, they're prepping Fable to be that like that 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 one. And if they do, and if, it, if that's the case, if Fable is that one, and we know it's coming next year, then I don't expect it to be at ID Xbox. The, 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 not ID Xbox, developer direct. And if it's not there, I won't be mad. I wouldn't be disappointed or whatever. Yeah, yeah I know it would make sense. It, it was like, okay, cool. Then it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead the showcase and get its own direct. Cause like I said, we've been seeing like, you know, clips in here and there and they all look good. The I can't... Two got announced a few years ago too. It might be closer to being finished than we think too. Yeah. There's a lot they can do with that, man. Um, I'm, I'm looking, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it, but Halo is rumored to come out next year. Halo? So yeah, so, some form of Halo. I don't know if it's going to be like, a Halo Infinite kind of thing, like a full blown release, or maybe a spin off or something. I don't know. I don't know if the game was if it would actually come out next year, but it's rumored that that you know that we're gonna see something related to the game. Maybe a, a, a reveal trailer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, so- I How think, far are we into it? No, no, no. We got we're we're an hour and a half. We're about to wrap up. I'm just I just got a text message. Some I think car accident happened at one of my jobs. But um we'll um yeah, that, that's interesting. So I'm again I think 25 over, I think they'll be fine. I don't think they will run into the second half problem issue. Um, but it's just this year I, the, the lesson they gotta learn is they gotta like they gotta be confident with these uh release days and comfortable. Um you no, know, it's like owning Rockstar. It's like owning Rockstar, right? And you know, or if you had the marketing to Rockstar as a GTA, right? And you know the date that you have, you can literally just web out the rest of your, your games. If you know that, it's like, hey, like my thing is you have Call of Duty, you should be able to easily go, all right, boom. All right, Avowed, you're here. Indiana Jones, you're here. Do, 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 do. Everything else fall at, at, at how, how they may. So. I hear you. <clears throat> We'll have to see. All right. Yeah, because Call of Duty is coming out next year, and uh, they're they're gonna wanna they're gonna wanna keep everything away from that sucker. All right. All right. Fair enough. All right, but we can we can get ready to go. It's been a good, a better than episode. I think we had anything to talk about, but we managed to uh, bust down an hour and a half of. Uh, talking points as it relates to Xbox. I know there was something that happened with um, that was the blonde chick, uh, a lot of peers, a lot of peers. We don't even disability have to thing. I'm yeah. sure you guys will talk about it on Weapon Will. So, yeah. uh, all right, but uh, we we appreciate you guys for tuning in uh, to another episode of Play Xbox Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back w- with another one next week. Uh, and uh, man, hit the like button, hit the share. We'll see you guys next week. Attic, you got anything to add? Anything you want to say? Anything coming up? Not really. Uh, you know, right now I'm streaming uh, Resident Evil 4 remake. I, I I haven't played it until now. Played the original Resident Evil 4, but it was years and years and years ago. I don't remember nothing about the game. And uh, they've expanded a lot on this. Uh, changed certain things. Nothing like serious so far. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely check that out. I should be playing Flintlock here soon, hopefully. I don't know if uh, I've been allowed to tell people that, but it is what it is, I guess, at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's 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 going to be interesting couple weeks. 
you know, Xbox might not have a lot of release dates, but there's still games that's interesting coming out. So, yeah, absolutely. All right, man. Um, awesome. So what we can do? Um, I'm gonna be playing the first Descendant. I think there's a few people in Weapon Go Descendant. I know, I know what Alex is, but I don't think the rest of them are. Um, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna. So now that I know that you're playing Resident Evil, I gotta watch some of your streams because I'm stuck at a point um, where I, I think the only thing I can really remember. Um, I know I have I'm access to, to a big. I'm about to fight the troll. So I know I have access to a boat at this point in time, right? Um, I fought. I believe I fought the troll. I bought. I fought the fire dude that hangs on the thing. He he was. Mm-hmm. And I fought him. I fought the, the dude in the barn. Yeah, I fought the. Uh, I think I fought the fish or whatever that comes out of the water. So I know I did. I just killed the fish. I just killed the fish. Yeah, that's when you throw the spears at the dude from mm-hmm. the boat, right? So those are the things. Those are the three things I remember doing: the spear. The dude in the barn and the big fat troll. I don't know which order they come in, but they've those are all done. And I'm just kind of in this area where I guess the flood happened or something like that. And I'm like kind of back to towards I guess the beginning of the game, but I'm traveling via boat right now. Um, is that familiar to you? Yeah, in the original game, it's familiar, but I couldn't tell you because they've changed certain things around. Yeah. So. Yeah, I so, can tell you how I did it in the original, but I don't know if it's necessary. Yeah, because I think also when I was playing, I was trying to, you know, I was trying to get, you know, trying to get achievements and stuff like that. But I'm like, you know what? Let me just finish the story. I, it, Resident Evil Four isn't a long game, right? How many chapters is it? Um, I don't know. Because I, I should I be able to you. finish it. It's just that I really should be able to finish it. I don't think I um, I think I forgot what drop uh, why I dropped off um why I stopped playing it, but. We'll get through it, man. But thank you guys for watching Planet Xbox, uh, hosted by Weapon Will, Weapon Will Patreon. I shout out. Thank you guys. Thank you to all the subscribers for making this uh, show continue and possible. And I promise we'll be more consistent with our releases. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best box. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. My eyes are itching. I think my allergies are about to start acting up. I'm crazy. I already took a Zyrtec. But we out of here. Peace. Peace.